Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me today. We are going to be painting a tractor. It should be a lot of fun. I'll show you step by step all the way through it how to do the whole thing and let's get started. Okay, here is my example painting. I used a photograph that we found off of Pixabay. I had a contest last month in my uh, Facebook group, my Patreon only Facebook group, and Faye Luxic uh, submitted this photo of the tractor, and it was number two. We we did uh, the sea turtle was our number one pick, so that we did that as our bonus video last month, and it'll be public in June. Yes, and Sheila Reed submitted that one. So that was our winning um, photograph submission. And this was number two. And I thought we'll go ahead and do it because it's Father's Day coming up. Um, so I thought it was timely. I've got my husband Mark here with me. Speaking of fathers. Hey there, everybody. He's going to be manning chat. But we're going to be booking today because this was a pretty long project for me. So um, it's fairly difficult. I would say it's one of the more difficult ones that I've taught. So um, if it's your first time painting, you might not want to start with this one. <laughs> I would just say you might be a little frustrated because it's got a lot of small details. Um, the background was fairly easy, but the um, actual tractor details were were um, pretty tricky. So um, I went a little bit more realistic uh, with it. So you could always simplify probably. If you wanted to, I'm going to set that aside and get out my board here. Now I usually pre-paint um, the background. Um, and when I did my example painting, I did the blue and then I did all of the green over the whole thing. And then I trans transferred the tractor drawing onto it. But um, to save time, I've gone ahead and transferred it because there was so much uh, detail here and we're just going to work around it and hope for the best so <laughs> it may take a little bit longer to work around our areas but uh, I think in the long run it will save us time so I'm going to go over my palette really quick I've got carbon black a burnt umber burnt sienna quinacridone magenta cadmium red medium but any medium red will do uh, cadmium red light or an orange um, this is yellow oxide, cadmium yellow medium, phthalo green, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, white, and this titanium white, and this is unbleached titanium. <clears throat> so I'm going to use white and a little bit of both of these blues, just picking up a little bit from the corner here and pulling it to the middle of my plate so that I can mix up some blue for my sky. Just wanted it kind of a medium blue color, not too bright. Probably have way more than I need right there. I'm gonna set that aside. I'll try to wipe off some of that just by kind of squeegeeing it off my brush. All right, let's see what happens. I've got a 12 by six, I'm sorry, nine by 12 canvas panel here. It's actually an MDF panel uh, that's got gesso on the front of it, so uh, I didn't have to do any prep. I get a lot of questions about prepping my canvases. I guess, I don't know, you can do that if you have issues with your canvases not um, performing well for you. Some of the cheaper canvases, you know, might have sizing or something on it that um, makes the paint not adhere as well. I'm just grabbing a little bit of white and I'm just going to streak it into that wet blue, not don't overbrush it because I want it to stay kind of streaky, maybe look like wispy clouds or something like that. Um, and I'm grabbing more white. I'm going to use the closer, the brighter white down here. Oh, good. I can go right over my mountains. I'll still be able to see that outline. So um, if you don't know how to transfer an image, um, you can, I have a video about how to do that. It is my feather drawing video. I should have put the link. Uh, I'll try to iCard it later if you want to check it out. But basically I show how to do a drawing on tracing paper or on your sketchbook, then trace it onto tracing paper. And here's my 
drawing here. And then I used transfer paper. And don't use copy paper because it has more wax and it's meant for typewriters. This stuff is art artist grade transfer paper, uh, graphite or gray. Um, and that's what I used on this. And it really stuck well to this canvas uh, or this board here. It, it actually was a little bit hard to erase, but <laughs> a little too well. <laughs> Usually it's pretty easy to erase it. If you make a little mistake, it'll come right off the canvas, but it's stuck hard to this board, whatever this board is made out of. I don't know. I think you should have written like little numbers, you know, no. everywhere, you know, Why? sort of be more of a paint by number kind of thing. <laughs> that would help you. If you yes, were that, doing that it. would be much easier. So, in your traceable, could you put numbers on it? Numbers, me, please? <laughs> okay. And yes, I will have a num have a traceable on Patreon uh, for this. So you can check that out after the show if you want to. The link is down in the description. All right, that is. I still have way more blue than I need to, there. <laughs> That's all right. I'll make some. I'll make some uh, something out of it. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna switch to a little bit smaller brush. This one's a three eighths inch angles, and uh, I have links to the brushes down in the description as well. All the materials are listed down there, and the brushes that I'm using. Um, so I'm gonna grab some of this quinacridone magenta, and we'll make a purple out of some of this blue that I've got here. Quinacridone magenta and ultramarine blue make a really lovely purple deep purple color and I've got a little bit of white in it and a little bit of that thalo blue. So we're going to use this for the base of our mountain color even though our mountains are going to end up being, do you have the reference photo up there hun? You will in a second? Okay. Um, even the, the mountains are mostly blues and greens and um, kind of almost orangey colors. We're going to put the purple down as our base color and then we'll add some other colors on top for you. And you can see that I took liberties with the composition because I did not want the tractor or the trailer and I don't know, you know, it's actually, all, it just seemed very cluttered. So I just simplified it. I left in the fence, put more of the fence visible and moved the tractor up so you could see the daisies a little bit more and made it a little smaller. So um, just played with the composition a little bit and it's made more sense to me. So it was just a little bit less complicated. I didn't want to have to do a bunch of buildings and stuff. We only got so much time on these shows. We're going to be long enough as it is. <laughs> All right, so I'm just using this and I'm going to put in my mountains. And honestly, I'm not going to worry too much about it being really perfect, perfect, because uh, one of the things about painting things that are far away like this is that they will be a little bit less distinct. So they'll the uh, details will be a little bit simplified, looser brush strokes, that kind of thing um, will help you sort of achieve that look. Um, I think that's one of the things that I see a lot in uh, beginner painters is they put a lot of detail into some of these far away um, distance things that they're just as clear in the distance as they are in the foreground and that's not a natural um, way. I'm just adding a little bit more white up here at the top. Um, that's not the way things look in the real world. They're, you know, the farther away they get, the less distinct they are, the more blurry um, you're, and the more kind of purple or blue, less saturated gray um, colors they will be. So we're gonna try to do that. I'm just, I lost my little hills here, so I'm just kind of trying to put a little bit of this lighter color in so I know where they go. Um, so we're not going to be too fussy with this background area. I just want to kind of lay it in quickly and, you know, we want it to look good, but we don't want to spend a ton of time on getting every little rock in that mountain 
exactly in, in focus and clear because that's really not going to be a real realistic uh, situation. Does that make sense? <laughs> makes sense to you, hon? It makes sense to me. I would just think that you'd get a new prescription of your glasses so it wouldn't be so blurry. <laughs> well, my glasses are too expensive. Dang. I always pick the most expensive frames, too. It does not matter what <laughs> what I go in thinking I'm going to go buy. <laughs> Mark's laughing because he knows it's true. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No matter what it is. That's pretty much true. Yeah. Works out worse than all. Champagne taste and what uh, budget? Uh, Caviar dreams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but on a what budget? I'm trying to think. Oh, we're on a ramen budget. Ramen budget. <laughs> That's, right. That's it. I, was trying. I know you. <laughs> I was trying to remember what you, you say. That's awesome. Okay, I grabbed an unbleached titanium there to use, which is probably a better color than the white because it's got a little bit of yellow in and it'll neutralize that purple, make it a little bit more grayed. So, yeah. I don't know why I'm taking so much time here. This just said not to. <laughs> Sorry, I'm thinking. All right, so we'll let that sit for a minute, let it dry so that we can put our extra layers on top. I'm going to clean out my brush, and we'll start putting in some of the green in the foreground. So I'm going to mix my green. I've got phthalo green here, but I want to make it more dull. So I'm going to use a lot of this yellow oxide here, and that's a really um, good color to use with your greens if you want to neutralize them a little bit. This has got a lot of brown in it. And I'm going to go fairly dark with it. I'm going to maybe even grab some burnt sienna and use some of that and do a burnt sienna and phthalo green mix over here. That'll work. And that'll actually be, let me grab it even. Oops, I'm doing this off camera. Sorry. I wasn't, okay. I'm gonna grab some burnt umber. That's okay. And make mix that. Oh, so now I have three different l greens: dark, medium, and light. And I'll probably do even more light, but we're gonna go dark on the background first, and then we'll add our lighter layers. So I'm gonna use this really dark color to put in this line of trees that's right here on this edge of the hillside and it's my brush is bigger than it needs to be but that's okay we'll go over the top of that line these are going to be small trees so i'm just tapping in like little sort of triangular shapes up and down nothing really to don't get too detailed with it just sort of random little shapes is all you're going to need you get down to about here, we're going to kind of tap it off. We're not going to need any more of that. And I'm going to grab that lighter color and kind of come in underneath and sort of create that hillside there. Just sloping down. Let me get to my tractor. I'm not going to worry too much, and I'm really not going to worry about my fence a whole lot either. Grab some unbleached titanium. Mix a little bit of that in with the greens. There we go. I'm going to put it in kind of horizontal so that if there's streaks in it, it'll look like it's part of the field, the natural sort of growth pattern of the grasses. We might see some highlights and there'll be sort of this horizontal streakiness. We can kind of use the curve and sort of curve some of them downward. They won't be completely horizontal. Some of them will kind of curve down this way, but add some water. My brush is getting sticky. I'm spray my palette to keep the paint some waste. 
while you're working with them. That will help. Okay, so I'm going to just go over that right there, all the way up to that spot. There we go. It's actually doing pretty well. That black is showing through nicely. So if you covered it up too much, don't fret. If you've got your original drawing, you can always go back in and add details on top of your painted layer later. And that's what I did in the original. I, I didn't have the any of the tractor in. I did the great greenery and stuff first and then painted it in. So I'm going to make sure I get all of this grass in here. Now, if you get too much water in it, what it's doing here, it's lifting the paint that was drying. Acrylics don't like to be touched when they're in the middle of drying. So you can work with them for a little bit while they're, um, when they're first put on, but as soon as they start to dry, they then they, and they do that fairly quickly, you really need to just back off, let it dry completely. We can always add layers on top later. That's the nice thing about acrylics is they layer very, very well. That's the the nice, the kind of benefit of them, I think. One of the biggest benefits of painting with acrylics. So they're very forgiving. So if you make a mistake or something, you can always go back and fix things later. And they have lovely detail layering because they're opaque. Most of them are, well, some, some are translucent, but transparent, but the ones, you can make them opaque by adding white. Unlike watercolor, which are transparent, you know, so you have to really protect your surface. I don't know why I'm rambling. I'll stop. How are you doing today, hon? Uh, I'm still doing good. Good. Any chat? Oh, there's lots of chat. Good. Anybody Hi, who's everybody. A, anybody subscribe to... The channel, you can jump in into the live chat, say hi to all the unusual suspects <laughs> that are in there. Yeah, hopefully they're subscribed anyways. They yep. enjoy our videos. And there's um, there's a little known, I don't know, maybe maybe you all know this, but if you click on the bell icon that's right next to, there's a little bell that's next to the subscribe button. If you click on that, it will send you email um, notifications when I go live or when I... Um, add a new video. So, don't know if you knew that, but can make it convenient. I told my mom to do that. <laughs> she, she was asking me to send her my new videos. <laughs> I was like, well, mom, I know that's really mean. I can barely remember to do it in my own groups. <laughs> I was like, well, if you want to make sure that I don't forget. <laughs> You can uh, click the bell. It's very convenient. All right. Let me, I think I'm going to switch to my larger brush just to kind of for convenience sake. So now we've got most of the details kind of in. I'm going to, and as we get down to the bottom here, I'm going to add more of this burnt sienna because the foreground is showing a little bit of the ground color and it is kind of a rusty red probably clay soil or something don't know but so we'll do some burnt sienna I'm gonna grab some more of my green I don't want it to be only that color I'll just add that in and kind of blend it now it's gonna look really bad at this point so don't fret that's uh, normal Paintings look really weird at first. It's just part of the process. They're going to have an ugly stage that may last till the very last brush stroke you put on your canvas sometimes. There's sometimes I'm <laughs> painting and I'm like, I do not think this is going to work. It's just going to have to keep working at it until it's like, oh, okay. That, that did it. That was kind of how this tractor went, honestly. I was kind of cursing it for the first... Uh, 
a little bit because it was not looking the way I wanted it to, but I just kind of kept adding layers and uh, finally came together in the end. So it's, art's not a magic wand. You kind of have to work at it, work it out sometimes. It's normal. Even artists that have been painting years and years, we don't, I mean, at least I don't, you know, approach it thinking I know exactly how I'm going to paint something, especially if it's a new subject like this that I haven't painted before. You know, you kind of just have to have good reference photos. I think that that's the number one thing in a new, if you're painting and wanting to get realism, you know, for going for, uh, you know, abstracted or stylized painting you know just draw from your memory by all means but if you're trying to get something that's realistic looking then you you're going to need a good re reference photo it's just no other way around it and I get people asking me for certain kinds of paintings sometimes and I'm like that's great send me a reference but you know if they don't have a reference there's I'm not going to try to paint your image your your vision of something there's no way I've tried that before it's not fun <laughs> painting a butterfly and a, and a flower that did not exist in the same photograph together merge the two together you know kind of did that a little bit in this one you know kind of moving this things around but I still kept the perspective exactly the same I didn't change it so I had a I was able to keep the reference well okay so I think I think our mountain's pretty done so let's go ahead and work on it some more and I'm going to switch to a brush that's a little bit fuzzier. So I've got a few options here. I'm going to show you. These are these two are older brushes that have uh, gotten fuzzy and damaged over years of use. Can you? Is it focusing? No, it's not focusing on them. Maybe zoom in. Okay. We'll zoom in on the mountains, anyways. Try to get it centered there. There we go. Look, oh, zoom out. So I've got, you've got the whole mountain. Zoom. Stop. Stop. It, it just keeps going after I Okay. Zoom in just a little bit more. Stop. But oh. It just doesn't. Okay. <laughs> I let go and it just keeps going. Okay. Well, I just have to try to remember to move it over. Okay. So these two brushes are still fuzzy. I don't know why it's not focusing. It's weird. Just keep going. Okay. I'll keep going. They can trust us. All right. So they're they're damaged, in other words. And I'm sure if you've been painting for any length of time, you have a couple of brushes like this. Um, also, these ones are kind of more stiff bristled brushes. This one's, uh, I don't even know what, American Painter. So it's really cheap brush, but it's got nice stiff bristles. And this one's my Deerfoot Stippler. It's quarter inch. So I'm going to use a variety of these and see which one seems to work. Oh, whoa. That was interesting seems to work best for me. I'm going to keep them fairly dry. Uh, might just dip in a little bit of water and wipe it off there. But I'm um, going to start out with some of the Thalo Blue here. Maybe dip it into the burnt sienna to tone it down just a little bit. I'm going to hold a paper towel here and wipe off most of it. Now this is one of the things that people um, have a struggle with when they dry brush because we're going to be dry brushing. So, um, and that, you know, means dry brush. I, like you really are wiping off 90% of that paint and you have just a very little bit on your brush. If you have too much paint on your brush, you will get big swatches of color. And that's not really what you're wanting in this, with this technique because you're wanting it to be sort of fuzzy and, uh, less distinct like we had talked about before. So, um, I'm just tapping here. This is working pretty well. And you see how much paint, I, even though I wiped most 90% of it off, I still have plenty in here that's coming off on our mountain here. And I'm just going into these dark areas and adding some shadows with this color. I'm going to be able to do the whole thing with this one brush. Amazing. Are you amazed, Dan? You're amazed, aren't you? I know you were thinking that. I am. You were just absolutely like, wow, amazed. I'm that almost speechless. <laughs> How does she do it? <laughs> <laughs> oh 
made me laugh. I can't paint. <laughs> you're. I think you're mocking me. No, I, no, I, no. I, I, I'm, I'm I was just me. like, I almost fell out of my chair. <laughs> okay. And watching it in 1080p, 60 you're frames. So it's just like, it's, it's <laughs> almost as good as a blue rubber glove. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> okay. If you get a little bit over the edge, you can do one or two things. You can either grab a little bit of purple and add a little bit more purple on top of that and make it part, you know, make it like you meant to do that. Or you can take your wet paper towel and just wipe it off. So either way works. Um, you just have to catch it while it's wet. So depends on your mood. If you're really going for a certain look, you may want to wipe it off. If you... Okay, that's looking pretty good. So, so already we kind of have some form. I'm going to put a little bit of this color down in here. And <clears throat> we'll make a teal. So I'm going to grab some of the thalo green. Oh, sorry. Here, here, okay. Thank you. I can't wait for us to get a palette cam. Well, I don't know. Maybe in the next. We have a camera. Well, I know we have the camera. We, I have just no mean way we to need hook it to up. switch. <laughs> we just need to buy it. I'm just, yeah. I'm, I'm just kind of, we're just putting it off, honestly. It's not that we don't have the funds anymore. Thankfully, the Patreon folks have been very generous. Um, it's just that it's hard months. to spend that kind of money. It is. It's hard to, <laughs> well, we're trying to figure out what exactly. It was kind of like with the camera, you know, this is going to be a big purchase. We want to make sure we got the right one. So I added a little bit of this light blue that we had down from the sky um, into this teal color that I made. So it's got thalo blue, thalo green, and a little bit of that sky blue white to tone it down. But yeah, we, uh, we're just kind of trying to figure out what exactly, and plus I'm a little bit leery cause I'm, I'm just like, I know we're kind of technically challenging and we, we just got the new camera working <laughs> properly. So I'm kind of like, Oh, I know it'll be really cool to have a palette cam, but you know, Mark's still learning the old, the new. Oh, we can do it. We can do it. I mean, it's just like, you know, you look on the internet and it's so easy. Just plug it in and turn it on and voila. <laughs> it's magic. Grabbing some of the unbleached titanium, wiping most of it off here. And I'm just going to add in a little bit of that. And yeah, I know you'd think. I'm actually pretty proud of us for getting the camera working properly and the new, the new logo and all of that that rolled out. So, okay. Well, I kind of like you to zoom in a little bit again. Just hit it, tap it. Okay. Good. Perfect. You did it. Yay, me. Yay, Mark. <laughs> I'm patting myself on the back. I know. He's got a little magic remote, so I don't have to do it manually myself anymore. It's nice. Nice, but now he's got to pay attention to what I'm doing and keep me in cam camera, too. So, And try to manage. I don't want your job. I'm glad I have, I'm sit on this side. of the. That's all I'm saying, because... I know how hard it is to follow chat and do anything else because <laughs> even just listen to the person talking because I've watched live chats before and they go by really fast. <clears throat> so Mark does a great job. Makes it fun for me. It's almost like a, like a party with our friends, you know, kind of get to come out and so adding some of this green, isn't that pretty? Well, we could leave it at that point. I mean, really, uh, at any point in this process, if you are happy with it and you're just like, I don't want to mess with it and I want to leave it, do it. By all means, it's your painting. Do what you feel like you want with it. I read a, a quote by Bob Ross today that I 
wrote down. I have it stuck on my monitor now. I'm going to. Are you sure it's from Bob Ross? Well, it did come from the internet, so it could have been somebody <laughs> on, the, you know, somebody else. There's no telling. <laughs> okay, I mixed up a little bit more of that teal, and this time I added a little bit of burnt sienna to it. So, to, to darken it. So, I'm going to add a little bit of this darker. But anyhow, basically the quote is, talent is a pursued interest. Anything that you are willing to practice, you can do. I thought, yes, go Bob. So true. That is totally my philosophy in painting and teaching is that, you know, yes, talent, quote unquote, having a natural ability or natural knack for something helps and give, maybe give you a head start. But even somebody that has that needs to practice. And uh, if you want to learn to paint, you can do it. You just practice at it get some instruction, you know, don't, um, one of the things that I also read, I like to read, um, is that, you know, practice alone without instruction is actually not necessarily beneficial because, uh, you can repeat bad patterns. You can get into bad patterns and repeat them and not know how to get unstuck from them. Um, so having a intention or an um, uh, instruction, um, somebody to help guide you or at least going to point things out to you while you're learning uh, a new skill is really important because you'll have quicker results, better success in, than just if you practice on your own without instruction. So that's my two cents about teaching and art. Day. You're welcome. No charge. <laughs> so I've got two hours to fill. I gotta talk about something. It's very deep. This is very deep thinking for me. I don't usually deep thoughts, deep thoughts with, Angela. with Angela Anderson. That's right. <laughs> you have to say it in that voice. Deep thoughts. Deep thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it makes it thalo, thalo yellow or. Not thalo yellow. That should be a color. Cad blue. I <laughs> know. Thalo yellow. Dirty white. Okay, so you need to remember that color now. <laughs> so we'll add that to our rep repertoire. What was it? Thalo yellow. Thalo yellow. <laughs> <laughs> yellow oxide and cadmium red light, a uh, red medium here. And I'm making an orange to put in our hills. And grab a little bit of this unbleached titanium too. And actually, a little bit of that blue will not. We'll knock it down, make it a little bit less, a little bit more gray because blue uh, is pretty close to green. It's opposite of red. So it'll just neutralize it just a little bit. You, it's always a good trick to use the opposites on the color wheel to knock down and gray out your colors. So, ooh, too much. Use my finger, wipe it off. I have too much paint on my brush. We'll wipe most of it off. There we go. I'm going to add a little bit of this orange color in here. And I don't want to spend too much time on these hills, but I do want them to be kind of interesting. There was so many pretty colors in the hills in my photograph here. I uh, just wanted to kind of capture some of that. So I'm going to grab some of that unbleached titanium now. And I've got it a little bit thicker on my brush, and I'm going to just dry brush here. Just tap. And, well, actually, I'm kind of, I'm dry brushing, but I'm sort of skimming with it. Uh, so it's loaded a little thicker. I'm just barely touching the canvas and just skimming it on the edge there to pick up the texture of the canvas. This board is pretty smooth, so it doesn't have a whole lot of texture. It'll work a lot better on a canvas that has more texture you'll really see quicker results than I'm seeing here but it works it's just you've got to kind of uh, tap instead of drag when you do yours you should be able to just kind of set it down and drag it drag it like this across and it'll kind of catch but barely barely touching the canvas just dragging it lightly See how pretty that is. 
You can use the tip of it to sort of dab in little details. Don't get too fancy with it, but grabbing a little bit of both colors here. So I've got a little bit of the unbleached titanium, but I've also got a little bit of this orange and I need to spray my palette. Remember to do that every now and then so your paints don't dry out. There we go. Now if you get a hard edge like that, we can just kind of use the back end of the brush to sort of tap it out. Pull it down. Or your finger works too. Let's add a little bit over here and we'll be done with our mountains. I'm leaving these pretty dark over here. These are kind of more blue. Grabbing a little bit more of that orange color, just adding a little bit of that. Okay, I'm gonna call that good. We'll zoom back out. And might add a little bit more green here and there, but you'll at least, you kind of get the idea. And actually might add a little bit darker, darker area. I'm gonna grab the thalo blue, tap it off, and just straight thalo blue, and just go in and do some really dark little areas in some of these valleys. Okay, there we go. We'll pop those out a little bit better. All right, now along the border, I'm gonna grab burnt sienna, a little bit of unbleached titanium. Oops, sorry. And I still had the green and or you know the other colors in my brush here. I haven't really cleaned it out, so I'm gonna stick with this one. This seems to be working pretty well for me. It's a through. It's a quarter inch angle brush. That's seen better days so I'm gonna pounce straight up and down to kind of fuzz it out a little bit more even and I'm gonna a little bit more on bleached titanium here I need it a little bit lighter and I'm just gonna lightly tap along that border this is my color I don't know what this is supposed to be but I noticed in the photograph it had kind of this fuzzy I don't know if it's dirt or, I don't know. <laughs> Why is that funny? <laughs> I just love it. I don't know what it's, what it's supposed to be, but it's, it's there. there. So, so we're going we're we're to put it in. We're going to paint it. That's right. I see it. We're doing it. Uh, okay. So there we go. It just adds another little layer of detail. I don't know. And then I'm going to use a little bit of it in the hills below and just tap in little horizontal sort of brush strokes here. It's going to be very subtle because we've got that green down, but it's just going to kind of tint the color a little bit and just use it to sort of wipe off what's left in my brush. That works. Okay. Let's put in some yellow oxide and ultramarine blue. That'll make a really interesting gray-green. Might 
add a little bit of the cadmium yellow light or cadmium yellow to lighten it up even. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so it's like an olive green. That ultramarine blue has a lot of purple in it. And when you put the purple and yellow together, they're opposite on the color wheel. So they will neutralize each other, create an olive brownish green for a puke green, but that's okay. But <laughs> it's our color for our field. So back here at least. And we're just going to tap in some color over the top. And now you can see why when I did those streaks, we're covering most of that up. You can still see through a little bit, but <clears throat> the um, if we kept it horizontal, you know, any of the streaks are just going to kind of look like we meant to do that. Make sure you go right over the top of your tractor. Don't, don't kind of do a halo effect around him because you don't want to have like little border line around it. It'll look unnatural. So, all right, looking good. Let's get a little bit more unbleached titanium or we'll, we'll introduce a little bit of unbleached titanium. most of it off and I'll just there we go we'll put in a little bit of that color It'll be our highlight color so we've got kind of a green background we'll put our bright bright like um, Kelly greens in the foreground these background greens are going to be more neutral and I'm just going to kind of create little <clears throat> Um, little pockets where there's dark and lights so it looks like there's uh oh never mind Alexa just turned on just with our luck she'll turn off the lights for us or something we've got <laughs> got all my studio lights on our on our Amazon Wi-Fi system Actually, if you want to see it in work, I did I did a studio tour in my Thankful Art group this week on Facebook, so and showed how all my lights work. It's pretty cool. I have to say that was one of Mark's better ideas. You were very skeptical I at first. I was very skeptical. I was like, ah, uh, no, and we then, do not need that. And then when you saw it working in the living room, you're like, hmm. <laughs> exactly. And I was like, okay. oh, yeah, I have like 20 lights that I have to turn on and off every time I <laughs> do something. That would actually be really convenient to be able to just tell her to do it <laughs> by voice. And I haven't looked back since. <laughs> that was a good day. <laughs> so I had no, no idea how many how much time that saves me. There's no telling, but it's a lot. Okay, I need to keep moving here. I'm talking a lot. I guess I've been painting though. Okay. It's just a oh, it's just a detailed painting. Okay, up here. I'm gonna set my brush down and kind of flick it upwards in this hill. This hill is a little bit closer to us than this area back here. So we can get a little bit more detailed with the Grabbing just some straight yellow oxide to see what that does. That looks good. Let's use that in a few places. I'm kind of doing these little circular sort of flicking motions. So you can do whatever works for you, but in the brush you're using. Don't forget, go over the right up over the top of that tractor. You don't want it to have a halo. In fact, it's looking like a little bit of a halo there. So I'm going to go back in with some dark. Go right over the top into that tractor grill. 
grabbing some of that dark green that we mixed up before. We'll go in and add some little dark areas and some dot dab some little like tree like things, little dots of maybe they're bushes or something. Just pointing the tip of this brush down at the canvas. It'll create these little dots for us. Okay. Alright, I think we're pretty good. I feel like it's a little bit dark, but we can mess with that later. I'm going to grab my fan brush now. Now that we get into the foreground, I would wet it I don't know why I just did that because you don't want it wet. <sighs> it's a habit. Thalo green and cadmium yellow will make a really bright green here. And I'm going to make a really dark version over here with phthalo green and burnt umber. Kind of the same color that we used in our background. But now that it's got that brighter green in it, it'll be a little bit more vibrant. And then we'll add a little bit of, of the yellow oxide to it to tone it down slightly. I don't want it too day glow green. And a little bit of our unbleached titanium to make it soft. So some of the, we'll use a variety of these colors. And I'm just going to grab a little bit of all of it. So I've got a little bit of all these colors on my brush. And I'm going to, oh, that's good. So starting about the fence line, I'm going to start to transition to brighter colors. So I'm just setting it down. I'm sort of dragging it upwards in this back ground area I'm going to be mostly just tapping straight up and down so the farther away area here I want just straight up and down but then as I get closer to the foreground I'm going to start pulling a little bit longer brush strokes and Overlapping them a little bit. I'm not going to put in the final details because we're going to have to do that when we put in our over the top of the tractor, but we're going to kind of get most of the grass in here so we don't have too much to do. We're already an hour and then we haven't even started on the tractor. Yeah, you said it was going to be like 30 minutes for the background. You wouldn't listen to me. <laughs> Come on. Who knows art? I kind of think it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be close to a three hour project today. So just saying. Okay, getting the darker colors. The dog may not be the only one snoring over here. <laughs> You'll survive. Oh, <sighs> I know. You wanted to do video games. It's too bad you can't do video games over there while you're doing this. Mm, but then you, we'd true. hear you yelling in the background. <laughs> I never yell. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. So much sometimes that I put my headphones on. <laughs> Just so I don't have to hear it. If you're in a particularly intense... How else are all the other battle. players going to hear me? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, if any men are video game watchers are out there, they'll probably probably relate. I can't even watch them. It makes me sick to my stomach. They move so much. The them I get motion sickness. So I I can't even be supportive and watch and cheer for you. I just have to ignore it. Not that I, you know, but I mean, I've tried. <laughs> yeah, I've tried. Oh, yeah, we've played Mario Kart with with all our kids. I can play Mario Kart. Yeah. 
for some reason, if I'm playing it, I don't. It doesn't bother me. It's if I'm watching it. It. Yeah, I have the problem though when we're playing split screen. I'm always looking at somebody else's. Yeah. <laughs> screen, <laughs> and then I'm the one running into the wall, not going anywhere. <laughs> Multiple player ones, yeah. Because like, Dad, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm going. No, no, that's not you. Oh, I'm winning. Oh. <laughs> I'm the one that's run into the wall. Okay. Yeah. So I've been wondering, do you think mm -hmm. painting the tractor is going to be easier than roosters because it doesn't move? Yeah. <laughs> um, no. No, I would have to say no. The rooster, you know... Might not hurt as much. Might not be as painful. True. I would suggest no paint the tractor while somebody's driving it. Right. Probably It'd not. be a little bit more difficult. Yeah. Can grab some lighter color here. So you can see I'm just kind of layering little layers. Uh, layering layers. Layering little clumps of grasses. So, like, say I have this one right here where I can see the bottom of it pretty distinctly I might want to go right below that and sort of drag up over the top no that's fine I think drag a little bit over the top just to kind of soften it up so if you've got any that are like really obviously and don't just don't look natural you can just kind of go just below them sort of drag a different color either lighter or darker over the top and it'll help sort of blend them in and I'm keeping all of these clumps fairly horizontal that'll also help sort of. and using a smaller fan brush helps too because you can kind of control it a little bit better I think so over here. Just gonna tap in some horizontal lines. Okay, I think we're good. Let me tap in a little bit of this along with this tree line up here. Just give it a little highlight. Tapping, not brush, not pulling this time we're farther away so we don't see the individual grasses that far away and it taps in that back there too I'm whispering now and this is the secret part I'm gonna be quiet thinking really you don't want to scare the grass exactly <laughs> don't want to scare it away okay I think that looks pretty good so we've got uh, some different colors here we have more browns I don't know if you can tell but you can still see that deep, like, red color in the dirt underneath the tractor, you know, in this foreground here that kind of helps. And I'm going to clean that out. Set that aside. We'll put in our fence and we can start on our tractor. I'm going to grab a small brush. I'm going to get a number two liner. This is a Zen liner then is the brand it's one of my recommended brushes on my brush guys list and be sure if you are buying brushes from the brush guys which I hope you do they use my code it's Angela Fine Art and you get 5% off and when you go to their website uh, you down on the left hand side there's a little uh, area that says teacher recommended brushes and you click on that and you can see all the brushes that I've recommended and you don't have to get them all right away but you know just it's a kind of a comprehensive list and the the Zen is the medium uh, expensive and the Princeton are the more expensive the better quality they'll last you a little bit longer but they are more expensive per brush I think the print Princeton are closer to three and four dollars a brush and the and more and up and then the Royal Zen are like two dollars a brush and up so okay I lost my fence line but I think it's right up in here 
looking at my picture here, my drawing. There we go. So it's going to start right about here. I'm just going to mark my start. It goes right up to the fender there. And then this one starts here and there and right there. Okay. Well, I'm just going to do these. I have mixed up, while I was talking, burnt umber, burnt sienna, and I've got, I'm going to run my brush through a little bit of the unbleached titanium. So I have uh, these browns and light colors on my brush all at once. And I'm just going to lightly This is a very rustic fence, so it doesn't have to be perfect boards, not clean boards. It's kind of a bit imperfect, so. I'm going to do just four slats here. And then like a post right here that kind of comes above and goes down into the grass. And we'll oops, put in, might zoom in, honey. I was off camera there. I wasn't? Okay, it looked like it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's kind of, there we go. So you can see. All right, so I'm going to grab the unbleached titanium back through, add a little bit of highlight to some of these, just streaking it in, make sure that I go all the way to the tractor. A bit more unbleached titanium in the top there. Okay, that's all we need to do. We don't have to put a whole lot of detail. In fact, we don't want a lot of we don't want this to be perfect and look very clean because it will it's supposed to be far away so we're again trying to maintain that sort of distance so these are going to come in like this right here oh, so we still need to do the house too here and when i did my example i just got them smaller and smaller uh, okay. Thank you. When I did my example, I the fence got a little bit larger as it came around this tractor. So there's some of the fence that's behind here that's behind the seat. I'll go ahead and put in a few little slats there just to maintain it. And it's going to go right to the top of the tire. Four slats. So this time it's like maybe one brush width. So get a thin brush so that you have a good width to work with. And if you're having trouble with the liner brush and it's just not wanting to draw for you or you're having trouble getting it to do lines for you, just add a little water to your paint. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of do the tops of these so I can connect this up. And the bottoms are going to be right about there. There we go. Keep it very indistinct, and I'm even leaving a little bit of pockets of um, color. Not, it's not fully covering. 
It's really important. Don't make this super clean and super detailed because it will look unnatural if you do. It won't look far away. If you make it really clean and perfect, it'll look like it's, it'll pull it forward. So keep it random, keep it uh, light and indistinct or in out of focus kind of feeling. Okay, let me see here. bit of dark to this one side. Make it look like it may be shadowed. Okay, let's do the same thing oh, over here. I'm going to grab a little bit of ultramarine blue. That mix with that burnt sienna makes a black. I'm going to use that right in here just to add a little bit of that really dark color along the bottom rails of some of these. And I'm flicking very lightly. I'm not, not getting super detailed. See, I'm leaving a little bit of it to the imagination. Your eye will fill in the rest, but if you paint it in <clears throat> perfectly, super, I'm, I'm going to stop now because I've said it three times, so you get the idea. <laughs> All right, unbleached titanium there. You do what you want. It's your painting. <laughs> I know. There we go. When I first started painting, I couldn't help myself. I wanted everything to look just perfect. I did perfect lines on everything, and and I would do, redo, and do and redo the same area like five times until I got exactly the way I needed it. And then the longer I've painted, the less, the more I've realized that it really doesn't matter. Although when you're, when you're learning, when you're first starting out, it's probably not a bad, you know, not bad to practice, 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 practice. But sometimes we can overdo it. Sometimes it's best to just kind of move on, call it good enough, try the next project. <clears throat> Don't get caught in the, all the little bog down in the details. You can get frustrated. Okay, so I'm going to make a red. It's going to be kind of a burnt red, so I'm using the cadmium red and some of the burnt sienna. I'll make this really lovely kind of barn red color. That'll be kind of our base color, and I'm just going to use that to fill in my barn or whatever this is, a little farmhouse thing. Out here. And I'm going to do some, grab some of this unbleached titanium, do some streaks down here in it. In my photograph, it was kind of, I wasn't sure what that was. It was kind of, uh, hard to tell so you can kind of see what I'm talking about there's some white down here and there's some I don't know it's, you can't really tell what that is so I'm just going to kind of go with that and keep it loose we'll add some white and maybe a little pick up a little bit of this uh, black make a gray I still have red in my brush, so it's kind of made this kind of light, taupey gray color. Use that on this side. Grab some burnt umber. Use a, put it on the, under the eaves there and just draw in that side that's in shadow. And there's some 
grab some of the unbleached titanium. Sorry, am I covering up the canvas there? I'm going to use that color just to draw in some little, I don't know what. Grab some white. Get a little bit more of my red here. Do a second coat. And I could have moved this house over. I thought about it later and I probably uh, might have done that. Yeah, but I put the house in before I put my tractor in. So I wasn't sure exactly how big it was going to be when I did my drawing. Original example one. Drop a little bit more white. We'll do some little highlights on the roof here. Little highlight on this side. A little bit brighter white. There we go. Then I'm going to grab some phthalo blue and just use that to draw in a couple little windows there. And brush that off, add a little bit of my red. So I've got the phthalo blue and I'm just adding a little bit of that barn red to it. And I'll use that on this side of the house here too. Okay. Get a little bit of that white. I'm using that white color right there. There we go. I really should be zoomed in even more than that. It's so little. Should we zoom? Yeah. You'd be able to see what I'm doing. Yep. Okay. That's good. All right. So you can see how sloppy. It's very kind of abstracted almost don't as long as we get our shapes correct we should be okay that blue is not dry All that good. I might even do a little bit of more burnt umber, a little bit darker shadows. I am looking at my example, realizing it's a lot darker on this side. Huh? Oh, did it? it down. There we go. You didn't just put it down, you threw it down. That's pretty I impressive. I did, I threw it. It's like I'm done with you, palette. Stop getting in the way. All right, good enough. I And then I'm going to go in now and set that back with a little bit of green. So you really need to, it looks like it's floating right now. So I want get get some of my green yellow oxide and green, phthalo green mixture, maybe a little bit of the phthalo blue to darken it. And I'm just going to tap in around this tree or around the house. And oh, I call it a tree. When I get to painting, words like completely lose their meanings at some, you know, at some point. It's so weird how that happens, but I think it's a right brain, left brain thing. I've kind of just learned to go with it because it happens almost every time. Okay, see, so now it's kind of set back in there. Um, can I grab a little bit of lighter color, green, and maybe tap in a few little random, but don't get don't get too detailed. Okay, that's good. Call it good. Zoom out now. And okay. 
All right, now along our fence line, I want to do the same thing. I want to take my brush and just kind of tap in a little bit of greenery. And I'll probably use my fan brush again later. But I'm just going to, you can see it better on this one. Grab some. Put some of these grasses over the top. Just kind of set that back. Make it look like it's part of the field. That's all it takes. All right, let's get our tractor going here. We're only an hour and 15 minutes in. We are just starting in. All right, it's all right. We can do it. We can do it. I knew it yesterday. I was like, ah, oh, curse you, Faye. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> Sorry, I'm joking, Faye. <laughs> it wasn't just her. It was everybody else who voted on it. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's like sometimes when I see stuff like this, I'm like, you really don't even have any clue how hard this is going to be. <laughs> oh, that's all right. That's all right. It was a good challenge. Okay, so we had somebody who asked a question much earlier. Okay. And said that when you get to the grill part of the tractor. Yes. Uh, is there any secrets or techniques or tricks to give it that rounded look? Yes, you can see um, where these, these kind of line up, but they're at an angle. So all of these... Lines. I'll start here. This one is going to curve like this. So it's going to curve up and then flatten out. And then this end is square here. But these front ends are rounded here and here. And each of these edges are a little bit curved up, just slightly, so um, it kind of curves up. These ones are kind of straight because they're looking straight at us, but some of these on the side, as we get farther down, we're seeing more of the curve of it. The ones that are at the top are more solid straight across. But, um, and I'm using the barn color, by the way, so I didn't mention that, but I hope you figured it out, probably. Um, same red. And okay. you can make this more vibrant red if you want, if you don't want it to be, like, my picture is way rusted out. It's very, very faded, um, but I wanted to go for a little bit brighter color, but I still wanted that kind of rusty red color. But you can make it all, you know, more of a fire engine red if you want. So whatever works for you. These are going to be all the same all the way down. So we want to make sure that all of these are starting are going to the same. And so these ones we're seeing uh, more straight. This top is curved, so that helps give it that curved look. But then right here is where you're going to do this little curve right there. That will, we're going to start to see a little bit of the inside of the curve. And we'll actually have a little shadow right here where that curve, in fact, I'm going to grab some burnt sienna while I'm putting it in. I'm going to put that shadow in with the burnt sienna right there, there, and there. You're seeing the backside of the curve. You're seeing this part, this part of the curve. But only on those three at the bottom. Does that make sense? Hopefully, maybe, I don't know. Yes, it makes sense. And be careful what you say, because Faye is watching. <laughs> <laughs> she chimed in in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> She says, sorry, it's complicated, but glad that you picked it. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's a really cool picture. Well, I'm, it's my fault. I picked it for the, for the, uh, they, they submitted photos and then I picked my, 
12 favorites. So it's, it's my own fault too. It was a cool picture, even though it is complicated. I didn't pick it. I wouldn't have picked it for the finals if I didn't want to paint it. It's not a flower. It's not a flower. And that's, I, you know, I told Mark, I was like, there's a reason why I like painting flowers because they're a lot more forgiving. These ones, these machinery and things that need straight angles, buildings, things like that, they're a lot more demanding. Need a lot more finesse. Okay, I'm going to grab a brighter red and do this top part in a little bit brighter red here. More, a little bit more of the cadmium red. We'll have that as our base color right here. Add a little bit of it down here too. So I'm starting dark and we'll work to light just like we did on the fields. Just and here I'm gonna grab this. I mixed my own black when I did this uh, example one. So all of this is burnt umber and ultramarine blue to get these tire uh, tread colors and stuff and all of it. I didn't use any black, but um, to save time, I'm going to grab some carbon black. I'll still add a little bit of uh, blue and brown to it as I work, but it'll just save us time to not have to mix it so much. So, just fill in with the black. And I, I think I do want a little bit of the blue, the brown, just to kind of um, every now and then maybe give it a little bit of a highlight color, like something maybe catching the light inside that grill. It's not completely in shadow. This is where you're having a really thin brush that's about the width of your grill is going to help. That way you can get these details in pretty easily. You don't have to worry too much about messing it up. Another curve question. Yes. Uh, is there a particular type of brush that would be more proficient, I guess, at painting curves in general, like if you want to, you know, paint curves, I guess. Um, well, I mean, a round brush would be more than a flat because the flat, you know, with the square edges. Uh, so a filbert would probably be my first pick. Um, but if you're doing like lines, uh, so say you're doing line work like like this. Um, this I would consider a round brush. And liners tend to uh, be better for doing long flowy lines, so curved lines and things like that. And if you're doing long straight lines, I would use a flat and use a you know, flat brush and run it along its edge and it makes it easier to do a straight line. So yeah, for curved lines, rounds, for straight lines, flats. That makes sense. And then for flowers with curves and things like that, then you'd probably grab a filbert that's got a rounded tip. Okay, there we go. All right. Here's where it's going to look really cool. This is where I save this for last because it, it's going to you know, like, oh, it looks like a tractor. Right here, this dark part is sticking out, is coming in. And that grill is sticking out past it. It'll immediately sell the whole thing. like magic isn't that cool it is cool somebody noticed the sign in the tractor yeah that ain't happening 
<laughs> they can do that if they want to. They want to put you that in right there. Right ahead. More power to you. That did not happen in today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, yeah, nope, nope. Big old can of nope on that. Not that it's that hard. It's just, it's just, yeah, it's that. It's got a lot of, it's got a little shadows and weird things going on in it. I just wasn't going to tackle that. <laughs> okay, I'm grabbing the burnt umber here. I'm going to do a little bit more burnt umber in this part down here. Okay, let's get some dark area up in here. Now that we've got our dark on the brush, might as well just use it. Do that, grab some red, blend that in while it's wet into that dark. This is the underside of the tractor thing, the wheel house, I guess. Is that it? Okay, let's put some of this dark color in here. Grabbing a little bit of my reds. Hashtag tractor some... facts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll call it wheelhouse. Wheelhouse. Whatever. Hey, I'm making it up as I go. You can tell we're farmers, right? Yeah. <laughs> I got to go to my cousin's farm once a year in the summertime. I spent about a week with them usually. Got to ride a horse. That's how I learned how to ride a horse. She had a horse named Blackie. That was fun. Saw my first rattlesnake there, too. Okay, so I mixed up a little bit. Um, I had too much black in my brush. Let me clean that out because I don't want it so black. So I'm grabbing a little bit of the light, uh, cadmium light, cadmium red light and cadmium red. I'm going to mix them kind of in equal parts to make a, this kind of more of a bright red. And this will be our kind of base of the light highlights. And then I mixed a little bit more. I mixed a little bit of it in with the black and the red that I had, the chemium red here. So I've got a little bit of that. I got some burnt umber or burnt sienna over here. I'm going to kind of mix in and then we'll have sort of a burnt umber over here to play with with the red mixed in. It's very similar to the burnt sienna actually. So you can see where burnt sienna has a lot of red in it. It's a good color to shade reds with because of that. But only reds that you want to have an orange tint too. If you want to shade, you know, want them to have more of a purple tint then you need to use purple to shade reds. Hashtag red facts. Red, red shading facts. Okay. And I'm just going to Kind of go quickly here and just use little dabs of red. I'm not going to get too fussy with it because I don't want air. A little bit here. Let's put in our seat area right there. This kind of curves up around for the top of the tire rim. Fender, right? Actually, an accountant that will go unnamed mm -hmm. said that it's called a farmal. This the is called a farmal? F A R M A L L. Now. Nice. I don't know if I believe them, but I, hey, hey, it's, know, it's just as good, good as our facts. <laughs> exactly, which is <laughs> nil. Hey, okay, grabbing the burnt umber here. I'm gonna fill in this area with burnt umber. This back side of the farmall. See, I remembered. I'm uh, doing the G word right now. Okay, Hold on. Google it. Oh, you said the word. Why wouldn't I? There's actually a club. 
Really? That's awesome. So I'm glad we attracted the farmer, f- the, f- no, the, it's the f- tractor fans. Oh, okay. Never mind. No, it's it's not the fin. Sorry. It's the name of the tractor itself. Oh. It's the brand. Oh, nice. I was confused. Okay. Red. I'm going to grab a little bit of red. I got a little bit of the unbleached titanium to soften it a little bit. I'm going to use that on the inside here. Farmall is the kind of tractor. Huh? Yes. Hey, the brand. Yeah. yeah, I think the the label probably probably had a label. I think I saw another picture that had something. Maybe it was labeled at one point, but it fell off. Grab some yellow oxide. Add a little bit of yellow oxide in there. Now I can't stop looking at pictures of tractors. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did. I, I got on Pixabay and was looking all tractors. Right. There's, if you want to sponsor. Exactly. I don't think they'd ever thought about sponsoring a acrylic painter on YouTube. No, nope, nope. you never know. Exactly. The president of, of International Harvester might be watching. <laughs> it looks like they're an older brand. Maybe they're still making them. I don't know. This one's been around a while. Cleaning out my brush. Did that go on the air? The my computer making that noise? No, I mean I could hear it a little bit in your okay microphone, but that was it. They'll never know anything happened except for us talking about it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, grabbing a little bit of burnt umber and black. I'm gonna put the there's this kind of coil that happens underneath the seat here. So I'm gonna sort of do sort of semi-circles here to kind of make it look like a coil, I don't know. And we'll put in our stove pipe or whatever this thing is. A little bit of white. And it goes up a little bit higher than that. I'll probably zoom in a little bit and take off the picture now, unless they want the photograph to stay. I think it'll be easier to see what I'm doing. Spray my can, my palette here to keep it wet. Good. Uh, too close. Zoom out so you can see the whole thing. There. Oh, okay. You have to work on your zooming skills there. And I mean, I take off my finger off the button and it keeps going for about another half second. I don't know what the deal is. I don't know either. To tell you. Just tap it is really what I used to have to do. It's just tap, tap it and. I'll just know. leave it where it's at. I don't want to make everybody motion sick. Okay, that's fine. That'll work too. Okay, I, I'm kind of liking this brush. So I'm just gonna stick with it until I, you know, really uh, whatever brush you use depends on um, whatever brush is working for you. I mean, honestly, I've, I've uh, done whole paintings with one brush before because, you know, I was able to get the results I wanted. So, you know, if you're struggling with this, with this brush, switch to a different one. See if that works better for you. You know, don't feel like you have to use the same brush that I'm using. I'm just using it. Seems to be working fine for me. So I'm going to keep on going with it until it's not working for me. We'll grab a little bit of unbleached titanium there. And this side of the tractor is a little bit more, I don't know, 
a little bit darker than this front side. Seems like it got a little bit more light. I'll grab some of that lighter color. There we go. I want it super dark. And I'm kind of putting in my colors as I go. So the more that I do now, the less I'd have to go back in and add later. I can do most of my details now. And get in some of these values, lights and darks, big artwork. Um, grabbing some of this darker color here, put the darker on the inside. Grab some of the red. There we go. I'm kind of just using it to sort of almost sketch if that's uh, makes sense. Grab a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue here. Mix that with my burnt burnt umber and do a nice dark shadow right there in that arch. Tap in a little bit of this color over here. And there's these rust dark spots on this. I'm going to start kind of tapping in a little bit of the rust details with some of the darker red here. Not there. This is that burnt sienna here that I'm using. to see. I wish you could see the palette when I'm picking up these brush. I'm gonna kind of move it so you can see what colors I'm grabbing. Try not to. Actually, I don't need the tire right yet. Okay. And just try not to put my hand in it. Can she do it? Okay, I'm gonna use the lighter, lighter red there for this part. forget to put in the steering wheel, honey. It'd be my steering wheel. It'd be my reminder. I I forgot to put in a couple things lately. Some of my paintings just get excited about getting close to the end and forget the last finishing details that happens. So I'll grab some Unbleached titanium here and just add, make it kind of a softer red there. Use a little bit of that at the top here. There we go. That's the color I'm looking for. Streak a little bit of that on top of this other one too. Let's use a little bit of it over. I'm gonna switch to a, I think I'm gonna grab that um, brush that we were using in the mountains. A little fuzzy, well, no, I think I want it a little bit more deep. No, a little bit more control. We'll grab the small flat. This is a Six, six zen flat or you could use a like a quarter inch sprite uh, this is the number two bright so either one of those would work 
So grab that. I'm going to grab a little bit more of unbleached titanium and make a really, really bright highlight red. Just adding a tiny bit of the red to it. We'll start laying in some here, this is like what we did on the mountain. We're just barely tapping, touching to get a few little. Now, if I get a like a weird line or too much of one color, I'm just gonna grab the a little bit of the other red. And tap it around it, tone it down. <clears throat> this is the color that I'm going to use on these to bring them forward. Look at look what this is going to do. Just tapping that edge along the very top of those rims and it's going to create a highlight and make them look dimensional. It's these little details like this that's really going to make it look more realistic. And I'm not doing a line, I'm tapping, so I don't want it to... Now, you could do a line, I guess, if you wanted to. But in this case, I'm trying to kind of... The tractor's not impressionist, but it's somewhat. It's got a more uh, rustic, relaxed, uh, painterly look. So I'm going to go with that. I'm going to use that right down the front of the grill to get too much. Just wipe it off. Okay, my union contract says that I get a 15-minute break. <laughs> so. You're going you're gonna to go take a break? <laughs> okay, go get, a, go get a drink. Take a smoke? No. <laughs> Don't. Don't do that. Oh, man. I'm going to grab some of the brighter red. <laughs> he does not smoke. Just don't, please no, don't start. Don't, don't, don't email me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Already got the animal people mad at me, so. <laughs> uh, but I, I like my avatar anyways. You like your avatar? Mm -hmm. What is it? It's controversial. I'll just say it that is. much. There's like a little thing that sticks up right here. Oh, we lost our little stove pipe thing. Oh, uh, I think it was right here. Hashtag tractor facts. Stove pipe thing. Yep. Technical term. At least this farm babes know this. Farmer.com. Like, <laughs> what is it? What is it? Farmwife.com? <laughs> 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 Farmers only. <laughs> Farmers only. There we go. That's the one. I may mention that in chat a few weeks ago because cause just the way chat was going and then people were like, oh, curse you. Now I can't get that jingle out of my head. <laughs> 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 yep. Oh, that's, that is a bad one. That's really bad. Okay. I am going to switch to my smaller brush for this little bit because it's not cooperating. I feel like I have to talk in a country accent when I paint this painting. Have you noticed that? Okay, y'all grab some red now. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I reckon we'll be painting. We'll be painting some red. This is cadmium, cadmium, cadmium red. It's sad we make fun. We're we're both not from here, and none of, none of our boys have a have an accent. It's really interesting that they grew up, were raised here, but 
None of them ended up with an accent. We must have beat it out of them or something. Don't email me about that either. No, we did not. <laughs> joking. I'm joking. Totally not joking. I'm joking. Okay, there we go. I am almost off camera there, honey. Almost. You, did not tell you me. are almost. We're almost done. No, we're not almost no, done. No, we're not almost done. No, I, I can see that. I told you. I warned you last night when you came in. And I was still working at till nine o'clock last night. Yeah, you did. <laughs> and you know, you know, people have commented in the past about you know you do the painting in an hour, or two hours, or whatever, and it takes them you know many more hours or days. And so, what the trick is is first paint the painting first, right? Then after that, it only take you a couple hours. <laughs> exactly. So that's the trick. Well, it, what's, what's honestly, your... I spend a lot of time designing. Designing takes 90% of the time in these paintings. Uh, the r actual painting part is usually, once I figure out the colors, placement, composition, all that stuff, that's what slows me down. The actual painting part is pretty quick once I get all that figured out. So that's what was... And plus doing the traceable ahead of time. I just decided after I did it that it was just not one that I wanted to try to draw live. <sighs> so the drawing part is not <laughs> part of this lesson. It's just not. It's a whole different animal. You just have to. Work that out for yourself. Or use the drawing and trace it. Because it's just a lot of little bits, a lot of, a lot, a lot of detail. Okay, we're getting there. Let's keep on going with this grill. I stopped doing the highlights and I don't want to do that. I want to go all the way down with it. And here, make sure you curve right there. Get that curve in there. I'm saving the hardest part for last. The tires were kind of a pain. So Hopefully they'll go faster now that I figured out how to do them. Maybe. We'll see. Grid. And your um, natural inclination, mine was, uh, to do the whole tire. You know, you think. But you don't need to. And really, um, it'll be harder to cover up with the grass. It'll look, it looks better if you just stop. Just stop, Will. We will um, make it make sense later. But there's some dark something, something down here. <clears throat> Go a little bit farther down than you think you need to with it, but don't. You don't have to do the whole tire, and it, it's not necessary. Really dark right here. Okay, trying to get that palette in there for you. It'll be nice when we have a palette cam, although when I'm working fast like this, it may not really matter that much because I can't, wouldn't be able to switch back and forth quick enough. Maybe, we'll see. Yeah, we'll probably get all dizzy going back and forth, back and forth, back <laughs> yeah. and forth. Okay, so a little bit of this kind of red-ish color, not fully red on the tire here. And this whole section is some of that red, middle red. Let's 
some of the more muted reds in this center part here. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in there and then we'll work out the details here. Grab some of the darker. using the edge of my brush to kind of draw in some of these details, keeping it very loose, very random, just little dabs and dashes. So I don't want it to get too fussy. Our grill is our most, is our focal point, so we're putting the most detail into that section. And then the rest of it is going to be a little bit less perfected. So. there. A little bit of rust on this side of it. All right, we are close to the finishing the tractor part. We'll get the tires done and let's go ahead and put in our first layer on the tires because they're going to take a couple layers. So we'll grab the black and a little bit of unbleached titanium and make a gray out of it dark gray. I'm going to pull it down actually I'm not happy with that edge there. It's actually a little bit curved right here so you don't want it to be so squared off. light color there because that's where our highlight's going to go. Okay, a little bit more white. Actually, the inside of this tire is very dark right here. And there's a little bit of this highlight color running along the top. A little bit of the unbleached titanium black mixture there. Lightly drag it through that wet paint. Grab a little bit of black. A little bit of the unbleached titanium. Streaked. There we go. Okay. Let's 
just use this color in here. This is kind of that medium gray color. And I'm going to leave the raised bits for now. Grabbing a little bit of black and going to go underneath all of these with black. Really dark. Not really worried too much, obviously, about the perfection of it right now. We'll just get in that dark in there. Okay, grabbing the medium color. Now tapping in along the middle with the medium color. It's close enough to our black that maybe one shade lighter than the black. So it's still pretty dark. And these tire tracks have this, the treads have this long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long, and it alternates in this kind of V. So they don't line up exactly. Okay. I'll grab a little bit more of the unbleached titanium. Maybe add a little bit of the burnt umber just to brown out that black a little bit. And I'm just going to use that for the highlight area here. So just tap in. I'm using the edge of my brush when I need to. They're old, kind of weather beaten tires. They're not exactly perfect. Okay, at this point, I have to break in and uh, make a correction okay. on the type of tractor this is. Okay. So our, You're still talking about that? You know, <laughs> yeah. So our accountant was wrong. Uh -oh. Minus two points. Uh, based upon the side of the tractor and then lots of Googling. Okay. Uh, it's an Alis Chalmers. A-L-L-I-S hyphen Chalmers. So there you go. There's a correction. Okay. On that, I know that you were worried. I well, I would have gotten comments, so I'm glad that you said that because mm -hmm. our tractor folks know what they're. I have already gotten in trouble with the cherry tree people, so I don't want to cause yeah. any <coughs> issues with tractor folks. And, and several of the people watching have said that you know they're thankful for this tutorial, you know, because they have fathers yeah. or grandfathers who are very much tractor, you know, enthusiasts, awesome. and you know this would be a good gift for them and mm -hmm. then you know be embarrassing for them to say here I painted you a farm mall and you know <laughs> you know the, the the father or grandfather might disown them exactly so of course that's not a farm mall come on right get it right exactly you've learned a lot in painting you've learned all kinds of interesting facts yeah don't ask me in about a month from now because I probably won't remember but you won't remember <laughs> Well, I, I'll forget by this afternoon, probably. There we go. And... A little bit of dark right there. And there's a little 
bit of dark on the inside of the track tread there. Okay, getting there. Closer, closer, closer. Let's put some really dark black in here. I'm gonna let that set and dry and then I'll add some more detailed litter. So I need to define some of these areas here with a little bit more black. Doing okay, on. Uh, I'm doing all right, I guess. Yeah. It's not World of Tanks. No, it's not, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm spending time with you. Oh. Thanks. I appreciate it. I do. I know you work hard during the week, so I appreciate you taking time to do this. Helping me out. Ah, no problem. Plus, you're funny. So it keeps me happy. Keeps me from getting too serious. And you know, I wasn't joking about that break. I'm just saying. You know. Do it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I can hold my own for a little while. So do you want to say anything about your channel while you're painting? Yeah, if you're new to my channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We'd ask you to. We do these um, tutorials a couple of times a week right now. So, And this is actually kind of unusual to have one this difficult. We usually do. Um, my channel is geared to mostly towards beginners. Uh, but Saturdays we do a little bit more detailed paintings usually usually about two hour paintings then uh, Tuesday nights we try to keep it to about an hour and make those very very easy for beginners like first time painters um, which this is not and yeah it's uh, it's been fun we really enjoy it I, I love the opportunity that YouTube has given me to kind of meet people and teach and I like to teach I've been teaching for about painting myself for about 30 years and teaching for about 20 or so of those and usually live you know uh, actual in-person classes but I started doing YouTube back in 2014 I think or 2000 yeah something like that and did my first video and it was popular and it kind of took over my I was using I was doing fine art for a long time and YouTube sort of took over my life slowly but surely so the more popular we've gotten the more demands it makes on my time so we've converted the studio a couple years ago to um, filming and I really haven't looked back from that so it's been really amazing and I really feel like it's a good for me, it sort of uses all the years of teaching and painting in one little thing. So it's been really nice. Plus, I don't have to leave the house with all my supplies, which is so awesome. And I get to meet people from all over the world, which is incredible. We've got a Facebook group that we keep in touch with, get to know folks on, and... Um, 
It's got about 7,000 people, so it's getting harder to kind of <laughs> remember names, but I try and I use it to comment. So if you do this painting and you want to share it with me, that's the place to go if you're on Facebook. It's the easiest way to get a hold of me on there. And I love to see them. I love, that's my favorite part of this, doing this, is getting to see what people paint. And seeing people paint for the first time. This one won't be that, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully you don't. Well, I don't know. I mean, you, more power to you. If you want to do it. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm just saying this is going to be more tricky. Time consuming. Usually a two hour lesson will take you uh, about twice as long to do at home uh, to paint along. Most of the time, that's about average. Just, you know, give yourself twice. So a two hour lesson will take you about four hours to complete. And this one being three hours. Uh, no, it's only two hours. That's not bad. We're actually doing better than I thought. Yeah, we're two hours. Good. Don't forget the wheel. No, I didn't. It, it's there. No, the steering wheel. <gasps> Thank you. Well, Mona reminded me to remind you. Thank you. Thank you, Mona. Mona's all over Thank it. you, because I did forget it last, when I did my uh, first version. I took photographs and put it up on YouTube and was about to share it on Facebook and realized it didn't have a steering wheel. So, okay. Black paint. Watered down. Uh, I lost my drawing completely. So I think it's right here. Zoom out a little bit so you can see this. There we go. I guess so. Yeah. More? No, that's good. All right. So. Do we have to have math to do this? Mm -mm. The square root new, where mm -hmm. square root of the hypotenuse. It starts right about here and angles this way. And then it goes down this way, behind that, and goes like that. I just ignored you completely. Sorry. I know. I, was just I didn't even laugh. I was going to say, Sorry. old houses always have old angles. What? Old houses always have old angles. Okay. Is that your hypotenuse? It's a... Uh, well, what do they call that? Um, Things to help you remember stuff? I can't think of it right now. I'm painting. <laughs> you know, I can't think of words when I'm painting. Think, yeah, since you called the barn a tree. That's, exactly. I can understand. Pretty, pretty much can't remember <laughs> that at all. That's like a nope, nope, big can of nope on that one right there. Okay, so actually it's going to be in front of the thing there, I think. Okay, close enough. Yay. Thank you, Mona. We got it. We're getting there. So now what I need to do is, this is looking very uh, kind of washed out to me. It's sort of, uh, you know, all one. Well, I mean, we've got a few values in there, but um, especially like in this area, some of these darks need to go a lot darker to give us uh, a little bit more depth. So I'm just going to go in here with this black and add a little bit of shadowing. And then I'm going to come back in with some highlights and add a little bit of highlighting. Could I get the axle in there? And then we get to put in flowers. So yeah, and I worked my flowers in there secret. I was a little sneaky about it. We still got to do flowers. We just were like, it's a tractor. But really, it was about the daisies. <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> so the painting's done. As it is. And then you could go in and add the flowers? Well, or no, do you, you still have the, more details you need flowers. on it? You need the flowers. I yeah. mean, if you're painting this for an old farmer grandpa, do you really well, need you the flowers? you could just put the grass in then if you don't oh, want right. the flowers. Okay. But yeah. You okay. do need, because you, you, your tree, the, these are looking like they're, you know, they're not stuck on anything right now. So you've got to mm. make them uh, 
look like they're attached to something or that they're covered up by something. I mean, they're right now they're kind of floating in the field by themselves. Come and grab some white and mix that with the red here. And Some of the unbleached titanium in the <coughs> cadmium red light here. Sorry, Just clear my throat there. My throat, the longer I talk, the more, the more hoarse it gets. And like, okay, there we go. I just need it a little bit brighter. I might even add a little bit of yellow to it. My yellow is starting to dry out. Okay, let's see if that's a better color. For some of my highlights. There we go. Just gonna start popping out some of these details. You can zoom back in a little bit, huh? There we go. Thank you. You're just typing away over there. Yeah, the keyboard's kind of clicky, isn't it? It is very clicky. We need to get you a different keyboard because it's distracting. <laughs> and yeah. then you're just wondering what I'm saying. I am. I'm like, I get left out of the conversations the whole time I'm painting yeah. here. It's not fire. The controversy reigns over what type of oh, really? farm implement this is. So we're just going to say generic. Tractor. Tractor. So there's there's a debate about whether it's the Farmall or the what was the other one? I said Alis Chalmers. Oh. And somebody said something else, but I don't know. It's obvious I have no clue. Now, if it was a tank, I could probably tell you what tank it was. <laughs> Maybe you <laughs> should you do that next week. World of Tanks for yeah. Father's Day. Okay. <laughs> no. Joking. Ugh. Uh, is next week Father's Day? No, it's, no, that's in June. Oh, uh, I was going to say. It's like, what happened? <laughs> and last week was Mother's yeah, Day. It was like... Yeah, actually, yes. Yes, it is Father's Day <laughs> next week. You're right. Taking the day off? Okay. Just little details here. Adding a little bit lighter colors in here. This brush is a little bit floppy to be doing blending with but it's working out okay so if it's giving you trouble switch to a smaller round that's not so long but I'm adding a little bit of this brighter red in spots just to kind of pop it out in places Find in my highlight areas here. If you want an area to really pop forward, what you need to do is put a dark color next to it. So wherever your highlight color is going to be, 
Uh, you know, in this case, it's the black and the white uh, or the light color was right up next to it. And it, that's why it pops forward because you've got that strong, strong contrast. brighter colors to this grill. And there's all this kind of like pitting and things. So if you want to kind of try to replicate that, you can kind of tap in some pitting. I don't want to get too fancy with it though, because I want to lose the shape, so I think that looks good. All right, we're getting there. Almost there. Highlight right up the front of the grill right here. Some sort of box thing. It's weird when Mark leaves the room because it's like me talking to myself. It's really strange. I guess that's why I don't like recording videos either because it's kind of unnatural to sit in a room and talk to yourself even though it's recorded. Okay. Grab some of my lighter color here and pop that forward. I was just talking all about you. Just took a smack. The whole time you were gone. I was telling him that you snored and all. I don't know. You ratted me out? I did. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> I was just talking about how weird it is to sit in a room by yourself and talk to yourself. <laughs> it feels so much different than when you're sitting in there with me. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, here we go. We're almost there. Almost. I'm just going to pop out some highlights on some of the areas that I want really bring forward. So, like right there. That forward right here. Right here. A little bit of highlight down here. Apparently, s several of the people who subscribed to your channel talk to you while they're watching the video. Oh, back. good. Oh, good, good, good. So, well, that makes me feel better. <laughs> so you're talking to yourselves together. Right. Exactly. I feel it. It's kindred spirits. Probably telling uh, me. What, reminded me of the steering wheel and stuff like that. I do yeah. that. I do that too. I talk to my TV. Some of your longtime followers just put out the 30 minute warning. Oh, did they? Yep. They were almost done. Yep. 30 minutes. Nice. So everybody who's new, when it just says we're almost done. <laughs> Why did I say I'm almost done? Yep. Okay. Yep. So, well, we're almost done. <laughs> okay. Now, I don't know if that's almost done with the tractor. So we got 30 more minutes on the tractor. No, we're almost done. Okay. Yeah, 30 minute warning. Okay. <laughs> y'all know me too well. Today I used y'all in a sentence. Okay, so this is just the final little bits here, just adding a little bit of highlights. A little bit in the wheel here. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Now, if I wanted to go back at this point and add any more details, 
what I would probably do is use a wash. And so I could go back in with my red, bright red. Right, and now I'd have to make sure that whatever it is is dry underneath where I'm doing this, but I could go back in and wash over some color in certain areas. Make sure it's wet or it's wet down or maybe a little bit of glazing medium or something with it. And it can brighten up a section, change the hue just a little bit without changing the details. So if you got an area too bright and you just want to tone it down a little bit, you can go back in with a wash and do that. It's a really good way of adding shadows and things. I'm going to add a little shadow right along this one here. Okay, we're going to inter interrupt your painting tutorial with an update. Okay. Our third update on what type of tractor this is. Okay. <laughs> All right. We might have a winner this time. Okay. Massey Harris. Are you serious? You're changing it again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it has the same curved side panels Heck. here in the in the front of it. The grill is what gives it away. Okay. So. I trust you. I trusted you the first two times, so I trust you this time. It's a Philippe and Jones tractor. There you go. I thought that's what I was thinking. Yeah. I was like, this is it's not a farm all. <laughs> well, I don't know why they're saying that. <laughs> that's what I was thinking the whole time. I didn't want to say anything because I right. wouldn't embarrass you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it, it looks it looks pretty much like a Massey Harris. I okay. Think, uh, now, uh, believe you. one of our long-time subscribers here can sleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Who gets the prize? It's Gail. Go, Gail. Okay, now we're done. We can end the video Gail right there. Gail or Gail? Gail, oh, man. Is yeah. it Scherzenick quick? <laughs> Is that right? Zernick. I know. Szyzilski? See, I know who you're talking about. Gail Szyzilski? Yes. I just don't can't pronounce it. Yeah. Sorry, Gail. Thanks, Gail. I'm sure she gets that a lot. Sorry, we're making fun of your name. No, we're not making fun of it. I just I I can't, can't pronounce, pronounce it. it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> At least she's a good sport about it. Good. Did and, she say how to pronounce it? No. I and, and I know people have a hard time with my name. It's Mark. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> they usually just say Mark. <laughs> but that's <laughs> I'm sorry. Stop. I can't laugh and paint. <laughs> you remind me of Dory. <laughs> was Howie Mandel. Oh, gosh. Don't listen to him, guys. Sorry. But, you know, I, I'm usually just blow it off. I mean, I understand people don't under, know how to say my name. So, it's right. okay. <laughs> Called Angelica sometimes. That's, that's my most common pronunciation, but... I don't think anybody's ever mis mispronounced your old name, honey. <laughs> you only wish that had happened. You could only dream of yeah. that happening. I have one of the more common names. I'm, and last names. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm from the Northeast, from New Hampshire. And when I was a teenager, I got a traffic ticket. Uh -huh. And so I paid it. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, Back in the days when you actually wrote out a paper check and I right. mailed it in and did that and... About a month or so later, we got a mail or a letter in the mail from the police department, you know, saying, hey, you know, if you don't pay this, you're going to be arrested. I'm like, oh, what are you talking about? You know, and, and so I they had to get a copy of the canceled check and prove to them, no, I did pay it and you did cash the check. Mm -hmm. And it turns out there was another Mark Anderson <laughs> who had, a, you know, the, a ticket for the a same ticket. amount and oh they my credited gosh. their account. He and was it, probably like, yeah, yeah, score. Yeah. So anyways, I looked it up in the phone book one time, and I'm no joking. There had to have been three dozen <laughs> Mark Anderson. I was like, okay, so all right. 
Not that unique of a name. No. <laughs> There's another Angela Anderson that paints and is on YouTube. <laughs> it's funny. I get her emails sometimes. And I even have one of her um, Christmas. She does snowmen and folk art kind of stuff. And I have one of her Christmas uh, snowmen on something, a uh, box or something like that. It's just funny. Like if I'd known that when I started, I probably would have gone with part like hyphenated or something. Mm. Okay, we got a pronunciation. Okay. Saselski. We were so off. We weren't even close. Well, no, she said we were close on one of our attempts. I don't know which one, but. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I need to stop messing with these tires. They're not actually that detailed now that I'm looking at the picture. After I told them I'm going to wash over. So it was 30 more minutes on the tractor. I'm just tapping in some roughening of these treads so that they don't look so perfect. Just tapping in a little bit of black over them. That'll be better. Okay, I feel better about it now. Same thing on here. A little bit of streaks within the streaks. Okay, we're good. I'm not going to do any more. Let's do the... uh, Okay, wait, one more thing. I'm going to get some burn number right here. There's a shadow right there that I missed. It's important. There we go. Because that's like... That'll make it look recessed right there. stop 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 missing stop all right see this is why my paintings that I do for the galleries take hours and hours and hours because I get in here and do this three hours later (laughs) (laughs) three hours later like okay we're almost done I'm almost done one more people don't realize that 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 was a time lapse we sped up that whole part (laughs) right there on the tire (laughs) That in, in real time, that was about an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. Not. I smart Alec. Just for that, I'm going to take another half hour. Just. <laughs> okay, so we're two and a half hours. That's pretty much what I thought. Uh, I'm going to grab some green. Unbleached titanium here. A little bit of yellow. Brighten it up, make like a spring grass color. Let's grab some white. Okay, and I'm wanting to go a little bit lighter than what we've already done. So just a little bit on the brighter side and we're gonna, ooh, look at that, very lightly. Now, don't get it on your tractor tire there, like I just did. Get it on there. You can wipe it off. That sound was the towel hitting the microphone. For Sorry. Those who are wondering. Sorry, guys. Okay, now's the fun part. So I'm going to set it down. Streak up over the tire. Over. There we go. And now I've got to Make sure that I don't just do it there, though. I've got to keep kind of going around it so that it looks like it's part of the grasses that are around it. So you need to zoom out, honey. I lost that whole thing. Well, we got the tire part. I was going to not tell you about the other, (laughs) but you got me. Uh Uh-huh. Is 
And the reason I'm doing a lighter color here is because it'll show up against that black. So, and it's nice. You know, we had all these darker colors underneath here to work with. So, uh, if my grass wasn't dark enough, then it would just kind of look all washed out at this point. So, I'm going to go up over the top of these, up over the top there. And you notice I'm not doing it in a straight line all the way across because that'll make it look like it's striped. You want it to uh, be, you know, some of them I got real close. Some of them are a little bit farther away. Um, that'll keep it from, you don't want to have lines of grass that are all on the same level, if that makes sense. Okay. Right now, I think we still need to zoom out a little bit. And can you see the whole canvas? Oh, you can? Yeah, see, zoom it out all the way so you can see the whole thing. All right, now I'm going to grab. Good. I might make you go back in here in a minute, but we'll see. Okay, so I've got a little spotter now here. I've got my white. I'm going to add a little bit of water to it just to soften it up. Make sure that I've got a clean white because I want it nice and bright. And I'm just going to start dabbing now farther away here. I'm going to have teeny, teeny, tiny little dots. It's not going to be any kind of detail at all in them. There's just little teeny, tiny dots. In fact, I might even use my fan brush. But no, I don't think I need to. Well, somebody asked, uh, how stiff was that fan brush when it, you were doing the grasses? It's pretty stiff. Okay. It's a... But it, it, yeah, it, I had let it dry. I had washed it out and let it dry. Uh, these these hog bristle brushes, um, yeah, the the soft fan brushes, I'm not a fan of. If you use a soft fan brush, but you'll have you'll have to, ha, you'll have to water down your paint. So if you are using a soft bristled fan brush, make sure your paint is wet and very thin, like milk consistency, or it won't work. Um, it'll just flop around on you, so you don't want that. Okay. As they get closer here, I'm not liking the flowers that this is making, so I'm going to switch to a my bigger round. Where is that one? There. No. Where's the one I was using earlier on the tractor? There. I'll use this one. We did we did a lot of the painting with this paint with this brush. Worked out pretty well. There we go. So as we get closer, we can make bigger dots. And I'm doing little random clumps, so um, and kind of horizontal uh, horizontal sections. So with these daisies, when you get into the distance, your um, your details become more uh, linear. So, look at I used a big word, um, and in fact, probably not quite that bright, but that's all right. Um, yeah, there we go. I'm going to set this down on kind of on that side use it to make my little daisies. Now, as I get closer to the bottom, I can make them a little bit different, a little bit bigger, so I can kind of actually do some little daisy shapes with it, a few of them. But for the most part, you're not going to really see a flower. You're going to see kind of a dot and maybe a few little random lines around it or something like that. So don't feel like you have to do all of these daisies in like a perfectly daisy shape. Just having one or two every now and then that's daisy-ish will be enough. So I'm 
I'm kind of looking for my clumps. Whoops. Got a little bit of solid color there. It's all right. Um, looking for my clumps of where these grasses ended and kind of putting my dots above them. So kind of makes sense. Looks like they have stems. Right. Leave a little bit of area empty. Do some and now we're going to do some above on top of the tractor. Yeah, go ahead and zoom in here. I'll just try to move it around. If you look at our picture, these are, I think they're like, um, they're not regular daisies. They're like uh, chamomile. So they're, they're these little tiny, teeny tiny daisy shapes, but they're not perfectly, you're not going to see, they really clump together very closely. So a lot of them are going to kind of blend into big lumps. you have an area that you made a boo-boo or doesn't you don't really like it throw a daisy on top of it and there you go it's kind of nice <laughs> i wish that worked for life put a bird on it exactly <laughs> put a bird on it you could put a bird on it that would be cute i'm not going to but you could we'll see if anybody in chat knows where that's from don't yeah, give, there you go. Don't, don't give it away bonus Points if Bonus you know, points. That's... You're not going to win anything other than our admiration, but. <laughs> oh, you didn't let me know. I'm I was we were, totally off camera that we were whole off time. off camera. We were talking about birds. Just. Jeez. The whole thing, like this. They, whole... can, they can use your imagination. <laughs> You're in so much trouble right now. <laughs> Okay, random clump shapes, not, not repeating, just dip, dabbing, little dabs, circles. Okay, and I'm leaving a little bit of breathing room, so I'm leaving a little bit of space in between some of these clumps kind of let your eye rest. If you did the whole thing with just solid white, it would get to be too much and you wouldn't know what to focus on. So doing this, you're kind of guiding the eye around your canvas saying, look here, look here. Maybe do another bright section right in here. Pretty, pretty, pretty. I know. Thank you. Now, see, this part I think I could do. Mm -hmm. You want to do some? No, no. Got a few uh, uh, somebody asked if uh, you could 
do like a splatter or something. Would that work or would that just be mm, too? Yeah, I don't I don't know if it would look the same. I, I doubt. Um, I mean, you could try it. You never know. But um, yeah, I don't know. Okay, down here I'm going to do bigger ones, just a couple big ones. Like maybe these are real close to us. No, I was just kind of doing these dome shapes too. If you notice, every time I do one of these clumps, it's kind of flat bottom, rounded top, flat bottom, rounded top. Um, that will also kind of do the, um, or linear, you know, but um, each one of these clumps is kind of in this little pattern of, and that's kind of how they grow. So uh, it'll just make it a little bit more realistic looking if you kind of do that. And whoa, we're so close, almost done. Let me grab some yellow. And... A little bit of burnt umber, or burnt sienna, I mean. It's really kind of more like yellow oxide in there, but I want a little bit more contrast. So yellow on one side, and a little bit of the darker color on the other. And we'll put in a few dots, that's good. No, you're not going to see all the centers of them, so just add a little bit of this yellow on some of the bigger ones, ones that are, look like they're facing you maybe, or a little bit more defined. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. It's been fun. It's been a long one, but I think it's worth the trouble, especially if you've got a dad that likes tractors, I think. We've had a couple of people do a super chat today. Shout Aww. out a couple of five dollar donations. So really appreciate that. Thank That's you so sweet. much. Thank you. I mean, who who was it? Uh, Joanna. Thank you, Joanna. And then uh, Joanne. Joanna. It's a battle of the Joannes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Joanna. Yep. <laughs> I see your five dollars. And, and I match I your five dollars. <laughs> That's great. We appreciate it so much. We, uh, we've been really blessed to get to know some of y'all through this fun YouTube internet deal. Amazing. And I'm running a photo contest right now in my Thankful Art Group. So if you are interested in getting to pick my video for Tuesday night, you can become a member there and... If you're watching this two years from now, sorry, it's over and you've lost your chance. But where were you? Exactly. You're late. It's I do these photo contests quite often, you know, every now and then, and uh, it just kind of helps me kind of get to know what you guys want to see. Keep I was out of focus, uh, out of thing again, honey. I'll be the judge of that. Okay. I'm going to go back in with my white and kind of define a few of these petals. Just make them look a little bit, with a little bit brighter white. The first coat of white is going over top of some of these darker colors, so sometimes it's not going to cover as well. You may need the second little layer of white to really make it pop and be bright. So. Oh, and uh, Faye has donated five dollars also through super chat oh thank you Faye. that was sweet thank you for donating or uh picking the video subject this was really fun even though i grabbed about it it really was fun <laughs> i was joking sort of i wasn't joking yesterday but I, I, it was better today it worked out working it out <laughs> worked ahead of time it was definitely the way to go. 
Well, you know, it's definitely something that you haven't done before, but I think it's right. a great uh, a great subject matter for sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's pretty popular. A lot of absolutely, well, especially around this part of the country where we live. You can see. I may have to. I think this would sell real quick in the gallery. <laughs> I may have to take this down to Little Rock this week. Mm-hmm. Let's see if we can get a Father's Day sale in. <laughs> Okay, just kind of defining just a few of these, not not too many. But that brighter white will really kind of make them more vivid. And even here, I'm not going through and worrying about every individual petal, just kind of tapping in little random dots so that you kind of get the idea. Your eye will fill in the rest. It's amazing how a dot becomes a flower, but it does. It's just your eye kind of recognizes the shape and does the rest. Okay, I think we're done. Let me zoom out here. A little bit farther in. There we go. All right, good. Is that in on that side? There we go. Okay, I see it now. I, sorry, I can't see the whole screen. So. Yes, it is. All right, I'm going to grab my pit pen. This is my Faber-Castell pit pen. This is what I like to sign with. Um, when I'm doing these canvas panels, it just seems to work well. I got a little red in that corner, but I honestly don't mind it. So I'm going to leave it. Uh, and I'm going to sign and say thank you so much for watching today. We really appreciate you, and I hope you're inspired to paint. Believe you can do it. <laughs> and uh, we will see you next time. And um, this Saturday we're going to be... Um, or Tuesday. Or Tuesday we're going to be doing... What are we going to be doing Tuesday. Oh, the, the painting that we're voting on in, on Facebook. So I think it's going to be a starfish that looks like it was what, what's winning. So it's either a starfish or a little girl in an umbrella. So those are the top two picks right now. But I'm voting for the starfish because I really, it's a cool picture. It's an underwater starfish, so it's got reflections on the water and everything. So hoping that one wins. And um, no, you know, no bias. <laughs> Actually, I'm looking at this now. I'm going to put in a little bit of dark along that tree line right here just a little bit of dark something needs a little bit more on the grasses there um and then next saturday we're going to be doing a uh or i'm going to be having an upload so it'll be our patreon bonus video and i'll be uploading this video that we did two months ago um so you'll get to see how i painted that it was a two and a half three hour painting i think i just got paint on it Oh, gosh. All right. <laughs> As you were saying. As I was saying. Okay, so this will be uploaded uh, for Saturday. And then if you want to watch us live next Saturday, we'll, we'll have that for the Patreon $5 level. And I'll have the bonus link uh, in my Patreon group. So you can check that out there. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.